Hey, hello, how is it going? I have decided I think I might just start filming my videos up here. I think I like it a bit more. Um, also, downstairs where I filmed in front of my bookcase, there's like a window that looks out onto the street and people just walk past all the time and people look in and I make eye contact. And it's awkward. So it's midway through January now. Um, so it might be a bit late for a new year book tag, but also I don't really care. So we're rolling with it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just sewing up my bra. The lovely Charlotte from Wonderfully Bookish tagged me in this um, tag. And the tag was originally created by Lily from Lily Eleanor Reads and Keris from Browsing for Books, both two booktubers who I absolutely love. I love their videos. They're so engaging when they talk about books and just really, how do I, they're really engaging and I just love watching their videos. And so, I'm excited to do this tag and I'm also really excited that Charlotte tagged me, so thank you Charlotte. It's just like a list of questions, it's like a reflection of the year and kind of what you want to bring into 2020, anything else you want to be doing. Let's just get into it. Okay, so question number one is, do you do the Goodreads chat? I curled my hair a little bit specifically so this wouldn't happen, but it's already falling down. It doesn't even look like I've curled it. Question one is, do you do the Goodreads challenge? And if so, what is your Goodreads goal for 2020? I do do the Goodreads challenge. Um, there was like a moment last year where I was like, felt so much pressure by the challenge, but I've kind of, I took a break and kind of got over that because really the challenge is for you not to feel pressure by it, but just to kind of like give you a challenge if you want a challenge, not force yourself into the challenge. Anyway, long story short, I do do the Goodreads challenge and I have set my challenge for 50 books. I did it as 50 books last year. I've only ever set it as 50 books, actually. I said in my New Year's resolution video that I'd only ever made the 50 book challenge once, but I looked on my Goodreads and in 2018, I scraped 50. I finished my 50th book, like, you know, New Year's Eve. Whereas last year I did 56, so it was more like, quite a solid reading year. I don't really want to do it any higher than that. I think my friend Amy does this, but she increases it by one book more than she read the year before, which I think is a nice way to continually sort of push yourself. But I'm honestly happy with 50. If I read more than 50, that's really good. But also, and if I read less than 50, that's fine. But 50, I think is a good medium and I'm sticking with 50. I also don't want to give myself too much pressure because you know, there's many times when I'm just like, I don't want to read like, and occasionally I'm like, I want to read everything. So I want to like take into account both of those mindsets that happen all the time. Okay, question number two is, what are some other reading goals slash challenges that you've set yourself for 2020? One of my main challenges, I know it might be a little like, yikes, uh, is I've set myself a six month book buying ban, which I know is very drastic and very extreme. I'm just getting my cup of tea. I know that's very drastic and very extreme, but I think I need to give myself some drastic and some extreme, like my books were piling up and books that I've bought so excited to read. And then I'm like, oh, but I must acquire more. I don't want that love and magic to go. So I've set myself a book buying ban. I'm still gonna get books out of the library if I want to, because I, there's some new releases this year that I'm super excited for. I am gonna be buying one of them. I think it comes out in June or July which might like in come into the six month, but whatever, I won that one. So, you know, I'm not gonna be too strict, but I really am trying to just get through the books that I currently have. So that's my major one. Another one I'm really focusing on this year is reading books that aren't set in the UK or the US. Last year, I set up a challenge called Not UKYA, and I made loads of bingo boards, and I made a big list of books that are set all across the world, and they're, it's organized into like continents, and so I go to there whenever I like, and fancying a book from a different place. I'll link it below because it's a blog post and it's hopefully a useful resource for people. I really want to focus on reading internationally this year and I'm hoping to widen my reading because I feel you can very easily get stuck into the like UKYA realm and the US. It's just like a, a large bubble that's like hard to pop and so I'm like trying to claw my way out of it basically because I love reading about different cultures, different stories, different experiences that aren't mine. Like, I don't wanna read about just me, that's not fun. Okay, so number three is, what is a reading habit you want to leave behind in 2019 and a reading habit you want to carry forward into 2020? Um, hmm, I don't know. I want to use my library more. I'm not really carrying this forward because I haven't really been doing it, but I want to physically use my library more. 
I guess last year I did use the library app, um, Borrowbox, which I started listening to audiobooks on and I absolutely love it, but I want to... A bird just flew past the window. But I want to actually go into the library and get out books a bit more. And especially if I'm on the six month buy book buying ban, hopefully I will do that a bit more. I'm just trying to think of one that I want to leave behind. I can't, I'm not sure. Um, maybe like don't rush books. I didn't really rush books last year, but there was kind of like a constant in my head of like, you've got to get on to the next book. Like, and I hate that. I don't want to be reading numbers. I want to be reading books because I like reading books and reading for quality and like actually really taking the time to enjoy a book if I really am enjoying a book and like savour it and really focus on not focusing on the numbers. Let's focus on not focusing. Okay, so number four is do you use any other method of tracking your reading other than Goodreads? Uh, yeah, Goodreads is definitely my main one that I use to track because I will like, update the page count and like, I'm on page 72, go me. Um, <laughs> I have just started a kind of like reading journal-ish. Um, I'm going to be making a video about this, so I won't say too much, but it's kind of like a mixture of like a bullet journal, yearly spreads, and a reading journal, kind of like two in one. In February, I've like designed a page ready to see if, to like track my reading and how much I'm reading per day, so I can see it all on one page. It's mostly a test around because like that involves filling in the book every single day which is what I was avoiding because I'm not very good at doing that so uh, I'll keep you posted on that one and see if it works. <laughs> Other than that I have seen a few people use spreadsheets and stuff. I like the idea of using a spreadsheet but that involves like the time setting it up which maybe I'll do. There's like I know oh what's her name in Lily's video or Karis's video I can't remember they mentioned someone this is so unhelpful that has like a spreadsheet that they use and then they make it available so people can copy it and use it. So maybe I'll have a look at that. I'll link it below and who it is because I can't remember, I'm terrible. And maybe I'll have a look at that, maybe not, we'll see, I don't know. Uh, number five is, did you get any books for the holidays that you want to prioritise in the new year? Um, yes, I did, I got a good stack actually. I posted a picture on Instagram, which you can see right here. I was very lucky to get so many great books. I am hopefully gonna be reading Us Against You soon. Uh, by Frederick Backman, uh, which is the sequel to Bear Town, which is my fave. Um, I am not your perfect Mexican daughter. I'm not, I can't remember who that's by, but I am super excited to get to that one. Um, Welcome to Lagos by Chibundu Anuzo. I loved The Spider King's Daughter, so I'm super excited to get to that. That's actually going to be in my February TBR for the Black Lit Challenge, um, which if that video is not up, I'm not sure. I'll link it if it is, but yeah, super excited to be taking part in that. Yeah, so many good books, man. Like. I'm like buzzing with the thought of being able to read them all. Number six was what will be or what was your first read of the new year and how did you decide? Uh, my first read, I will get it actually. My first read was The Last by Hannah Jameson and all throughout the month of January, Ben, my boyfriend, has picked my books that I'm gonna be reading. Uh, and so that was the first book he picked for me to read. Eh, it was fine. <laughs> I'm making a video of this whole month of Ben picking my books so that'll be posted soon uh, so look out for that one because there's been some interesting books and some good books and some yeah it's been a really nice way to like experience books and getting someone else to pick your books that you're reading is so I've never done it before but I actually love it like with if Ben said to me like oh I really like read that book I note it and I'm like ah oh, Ben really liked that book I will read that but then I prioritize everything that I want to do which <laughs> So him actually being like, nope, this is the book you're reading has just been so much fun. And I'm hoping to do it again, maybe with like my best friend or like my sister or my family or something. I don't know, we'll see, but like loving it. Uh, number seven is, are there any series you want to finish this year? Um, I don't really read a lot of series because that's more like fantasy based books and I don't really read fantasy all that often. I'm more of a contemporary gal. I'm just thinking of my bookshelves. I know that Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, I read that first book about five years ago. And I know that that is a series, but there's not like a strong intention for me to like keep reading it. Oh, Hank Green, <laughs> his book, um, an absolutely remarkable thing. The sequel of that, it's like a duology, is coming out this year. That's actually the book I'm going to be buying. How did I forget that? Stupid. Uh, the sequel is called A Beautifully Foolish Endeavour. Uh, it comes out in June or July-ish. Uh, so I will definitely be finishing that series. Okay, so number eight is whose content are you most excited to watch going into the new year? So many people's. I'm just trying to think who I like 
eagerly I'm like oh yeah they've got a new video that's so exciting I mean I love Lily from Lily Eleanor Reads I think she talks wonderfully about books with so much passion and just like really insightfully and really interestingly I always love to hear what she has to say in her wrap-ups uh, I love Karis as well for so basically the two people that created this tag uh, from browsing for books I think she's really funny and she has some really like creative unique ideas and just like generally like create some really interesting content um so that's really cool i also really love charlotte's books um wonder to be bookish she tagged me uh, i love her books did i just say <laughs> i love her videos i just think they're just so calming to watch i always put them on as i'm cooking <laughs> um and she just talks really well and just like passionately and just just also seems like such a lovely human so i love that i love sean's videos from caffeine and commas uh she's one of my faves she's also a good friend so bias but I love her videos I always whenever I watch her videos there's always a book that I end up adding to my TBR which is bad but excellent because she clearly has a good taste in books and I love finding out different thrillers from her like usually it's thrillers I seem to be like oh that sounds really interesting um other people I don't know just loads of people I love Ashley's A Frolic Through Fiction's uh videos I love her reading vlogs and I love her passion for like mythological books i like have no intention of reading mythological fantasy but i love to watch along as she reads so much like mythology and like fantasy so if you like mythology um she hosts a thing called myth take which is like a monthly book club where everyone reads like a myth themed book i love watching about it i don't usually take part but yeah i love her videos brit as well from basically brit i love her i'm just gonna keep going to be honest because i have so many people i just love to watch yeah, Brit from Basically Brit. She hosts the Basically Readathon. It's like a 24 hour readathon, um, just every so often to like read a book off your backlist. And I love that. As we all know, I'm here for reading books off your backlist. Yeah, she just seems lovely. And she actually has an Etsy store as well. I got this sunflower from her Etsy store, which is like absolutely stunning. It's like painted on a record. It's like, I actually, this is one of my favorite pieces of art. Um, Farah from The Farah Project. I love watching her videos. I always discover, interesting and like thoughtful books when i watch her videos and i love how honestly she speaks about books um so she's another fave i'm gonna link everyone that i've mentioned down below alongside those people there's also some like slightly bigger booktubers sana from books and quills and ariel ariel Bassett. i love watching their videos i've watched them for ages and like especially sana actually i like really love her videos they always just fill me with such warmth so yeah, those are the few people, but there's so many others. Hello, Editing Jazz. There are so many people I have missed, but I specifically want to shout out Kira from Kira's Corner. I don't know how I missed her, but every single time a video of hers pops up in my subscription box, I get so excited and I immediately watch it. She does lots of readathons and she seems to read incredibly quickly, which is like inspiration and just excellent to watch. Um, and during Bake Off, she also did like a vegan Bake Off like challenge for herself and that was like so much fun to watch. I just love her videos, they're very warm and cosy and like, I had to, I was like, how have I forgotten about Kira? You know, there's just too many people, but I specifically felt the need to make this quick extra video to shout her out. Okay, bye. So many people I'm excited for. <laughs> I love booktube. Okay, so yeah, question number nine is, are there any readathons you're anticipating or want to participate in? The Reading Rush, previously booktubeathon. I loved last year and I took part in like a video challenge and I did like a little reading vlog and I don't know what I'll be doing this year, but I just love taking part and I love to trying to read seven books in seven days and never accomplishing it. Just love it. I'm also just gonna take a moment to shout out a readathon that me and Sean from Caffeine and Commerce, I mentioned her earlier, um, we're co-hosting. It's called the Groundhog Day Readathon and it's happening over Groundhog Day weekend from the 31st of January to the 2nd of February. So over that weekend. And the aim is to reread one of your favorite books. Uh, I'm going to be rereading Bear Town, which I'm psyched for, and it should just be a fun little bubble of like everyone taking the time to reread a fave. Uh, can't wait. Bias because I'm co hosting the readathon, so obviously I'm taking part in it, but I'm excited. So I'm just editing, and I wanted to mention the Black Lit Challenge, which had, you know, fallen out of my head when I filmed this video. Um, and also shout out Seiji from the Artisan Geek. I'm so excited for the whole challenge. Um, and Seiji was so creative with how she did it. So there's like four challenges and it's set for the whole of February. So go and take part and I'll link it down below. There was basically like a bonus challenge at the end. And the bonus challenge was to read a book recommended by Ina. And it was basically like a choose your own adventure with 
like booktube and so you like I'll link the first video below as I've just said but like listen and then choose a pathway and then from that video it, you like answer the question and choose another pathway and it's so much fun like honestly just go and do it anyway although you should obviously also take part in the reading challenge it's just like honestly the most creative thing I've ever seen and I had such a good time and it's just you can see how much effort has been put into that so I'd like fully oh such an inspiration definitely go and check that out and take part if you can okay bye okay so number 10 is what 2020 debut novels are you looking forward to in 2020 <laughs> this year <laughs> debut is like both a great question and a quite a hard question um because a lot of books i'm excited for obviously like they've already published a book like loveless by alice oseman i'm excited for um clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo she wrote with a fire on high and the poet x um both books which actually i haven't read but i'm about to read the with a fire on high but Anyway, I'm still really excited for that book. Oh no, there is one actually. One book I am excited, and I believe it's her debut novel, is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I'm really fortunate to have gotten a proof copy. Oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna go and get it. <laughs> How do I get so out of breath from running up the stairs as I've seen? This is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. It says, all he did was fall in love with me. I need to do... <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready to continue. <laughs> And it says up the front, all he did was fall in love with me and the world turned him into a monster. This book is about a woman who, when she was younger, was groomed by her teacher. I believe it's her teacher. And it's kind of about, I mean, I haven't read it, so I can't really say exactly, but it's about a reflection looking back at when she was younger, in hindsight, when she's older and kind of like looking back on the mindset of when, she, when this was happening and not thinking anything was wrong, that sort of thing. I've heard wonderful, amazing things about this book. It's not a story you see often. The only other book I've read on this sort of topic is Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. That's all set at the time of it happening. Um, that is a really good book, I would highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, no, this is, has definitely a different spin on with the reflection element. So you'll be seeing a review of this one soon. Soon. Okay, so number 11 is shout out a smaller creator, your definition of smaller, that you found in 2019 and you're really excited to continue watching in 2020. I actually found this channel at like right at the beginning of 2020, so it doesn't really count, but I'm gonna shout her out anyway because I, I love her videos and she doesn't have many. Yeah, the channel I'm shouting out is Book Field Life and it's Natalia Martinez. Um, I discovered her from like one of those booktube threads on Twitter and I love her videos. She is so engaging and I've discovered so many books that I've added to my TBR. Specifically, I'm gonna link down below the video that she did for her Diverse Books 2020 video and she shouted out basically a load of Puerto Rican and Dominican books and books by authors that are Puerto Rican and Dominican and I have found so many books that I want to read now and she talks about them so engagingly and so well and it just, I'm just so, you know when you find a channel and you're just like, wow, I love your videos and I love your passion and I literally can't wait for more videos. <laughs> everyone definitely go and check her out and check out everyone I shouted out earlier. Um, they're all wonderful human beings. And yeah, that is the tag. Um, I wanna say a massive thanks again to Charlotte for tagging me. I just feel just so happy to be a part of this community. I know I'm still quite new at making videos, but I just, I absolutely love doing it, um, which is so great because last year I was so slumped with my blog and I felt like I was doing it just because I had to, which is so stupid. <laughs> like, no one has to write a blog, Jazz. Yikes. But no, I'm super into making these videos and I just feel so happy to be a part of this community. I am going to be tagging Sean from Caffeine and Commas and Natalia from Books Build Life, Natalia Martinez. It might be a bit late to do your new year book tag, but I'm going to tag people anyway and you know, if they don't do it, it's fine. But also if you want to do it and you're watching this, you are tagged, my friend, you're tagged. <laughs> this tea has now gone cold, classic me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoy this weird content. Um, hit the like button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Um, not that hitting the like button will enable you to not miss a video, but it helps me out. <laughs> I will see you in a new video. Bye.